They've never been a warlike people. But with their ceremonies, they love to celebrate the great mysteries of life and nature. <laughs> Yes. Nowadays, with people having their radio or television, the older generation still loves it best to sit and listen to the sounds of nightfall, to the sounds of noon. Now, there may develop a conversation on a number of various topics. Considering that this is the month of September, they may be wondering whether there'll be a pine nut dance this fall. They may talk about the monthly check they receive from the government or the state. Or they may be discussing Joe Sleeping Beak, who is said to have seen on a clear night in the moon calling water babies at the lake as recently as the week before last. And that in turn may plunge them into meditating on their legends. Word has just been passed around. There is going to be a pine nut dance after all, though there hasn't been one for a few years now. Good thing to have been mending the winnowing basket and fixing the truck as it'll be needed for the harvesting. Good thing too, that people won't just go and pick like they've been doing for some time, becoming all so comfortable and complacent. But they'll be dancing and praying to the great spirit creator of all living creatures. In the old times, the pine nut ceremony used to last four days, ending with an all-night dance before harvesting the nuts. There used to be all kinds of games, foot races, archery contests, shinny and hand game. Of all these, only the hand game has survived. And here, just outside Dresslerville, the women now assemble to play the game. The men like to have their own game in another part of the sagebrush expanse. The game is played with sticks and bones. Each side gets five tally sticks. The bones are hidden and have to be guessed. When one side has captured all the tally sticks, the game ends and a new one starts. From way back, this has been a betting game, with the women doing their own betting. Frida is one of the best singers in the hand game. There are four bones, wooden ones, and those doing the hiding get two each. One of the bones is marked black. That's the loser. The bones are mixed under a blanket. The opposite side is watching. They'll do the guessing. And nothing must give away the hand that has the bone.
This is the guessing gesture, and the hand says probably it's in the outside hand. Uh, more likely in the center. No, not so. Must be hidden in the other hand. A wet cloth around the bottle keeps the water cool. It's our turn now. Leo, Leo, to walk there. Leo, 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 This sagebrush, as old as time, helpful against many a sickness, is really a revered ingredient in most all ceremonies. And although it grows wild all over, it is handled delicately, as if it were a strange flower. Weeks before harvesting the pine nuts, there's a tender little ceremony burying a green, unripe pine cone in water, in moving, living water, together with a fresh piece of sage. With a prayer, then, one makes sure that one has not offended nature, and one prays to assure a bountiful harvest. <laughs> These burden baskets made by the women have been through many a harvest, but this is not yet harvesting. Only a few families have come to pick just enough nuts for the pine nut soup for the morning ceremony. Thousands and thousands of years ago, the harvesting was done in exactly the same way, with the same implements. And without a shadow of a doubt, this remains the best and only way. 
Not the younger people so much anymore, but the older ones wouldn't think of toasting the nuts over an indoor fire, particularly when preparing it for a ceremony. It's rarely that a person will sit and do this alone. All this is a social event. Family members or friends come around, children come to play where the women are, a perfect occasion for chatting, talking as women will. The hot embers are gathered right into the basket to toast the nuts until they're crisp and then they're tossed out. Mm -hmm. return with the rabbits they've caught just before the sun was setting. The rabbit meat, like the pine nut soup, will be prepared for the morning ceremony. Home from work, marking time until the dance begins letting the hours pass. Some people still paint their faces for the pine nut dance. They use white chalk. White is for purity. Did 
The summoning has begun, calling people from all over to come to the dance, to a clearing where the dance will be, right in Dresslerville. Calling in all four directions so that all might hear, the leader of the Pine Nut Dance sends aloft his formal invitation for which the tribe has been waiting. Many people come in their cars, but mostly because they bring the old and the children. Many come on foot. Always from left to right, always clockwise, from east to west, moves the circle. Hands clasped, fingers locked, the circle holds, under the stars, throughout the night. They are the circle. Life is a circle. There's no word for goodbye. He who goes will return. The dance goes on. <laughs> As in the old days when the chief spoke to the tribe, listen, my people, we're here together on this ground because we live here. Don't put your children to bed. Keep them awake because this is pine nut time, because this is good for all of us. Be happy and dance, dance well, because, oh, these dances of ours are becoming less and less frequent. Be good to your children, to each other. Pray to the Creator. This the young will remember and pass on to the next generation. These songs and these night-long dances lie outside civilization. Time has stopped. This is centuries ago. The night wears on. It's colder now. Silence. Quiet. The mountains. The stars. All things are close. Oh, my God. 
The sun is going to be up presently, and the morning ceremony is nearing. The consummation of the rabbit meat and the pine nut soup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is up to a prominent person in the tribe to say a prayer on behalf of the tribe. Clara delivers the prayer. Although the dance has lasted throughout the night, there's no impatience in anyone. The ceremony having come to a close, the pine nut harvesting has now officially been opened. As people disperse going home or to town, the day gets underway. Topmost are preparations for the winter. preparation. Like the pine nut, the acorn used to be a staple food in the old days, but it has to be picked in California as it does not grow here. Sadie was born in a teepee. 
Her face has the bluish old marks, different with each tribe, which made recovery easier when babies were stolen by other tribes. In the early afternoon, the school bus brings the children back from high school. Freddie and Elda Smokey cut across as they live at the other end, close to Minnie's. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Minnie is one of the few women who still makes baskets. Whenever a basket is needed, she makes one. But the great art of basket making, that is gone. These are among the finest Indian baskets made on this continent by the Washoe basket maker, Datso Lali. Here at the Nevada State Museum, some of her baskets are preserved. Others are in museums in Chicago and Pittsburgh. Nancy used to make beautiful baskets. Very beautiful ones. Very. It is an early breakfast at the Smokey family, the father having to leave for work and Freddie and Elda going off to school. The older people prefer to speak their own language, but not so the young ones. They understand, but they hardly speak Washoe anymore. Elda has to go too, taking the same bus. But Elda did not go to school. It is a decisive moment in a girl's life that is bringing Elda back. The girl no longer is a child. She has become a woman. The advent of puberty is an important event with the Washoes, and they celebrate it with an age-old ceremony. There are strict rules the girl will have to observe. For four days, she must not take any nourishment. She can drink only water. She mustn't injure her skin, for scars will remain for life. She mustn't comb her hair. In these four days, her future life will be shaped. The puberty news is joyful news. There'll be dancing and feasting given by the girl's family for relatives, friends, and others welcomed. 
The preparations are going to last four days. Four is the magical number. Four are directions of Mother Earth. And it is on the fourth night that the all-night dancing will take place. This pole, made of elderberry wood, has been prepared ahead of time. The pole represents the girl, and for four days, she must carry it with her wherever she goes. She must take care to keep the pole upright at all times, lest she become sick or bent over. As a special offering, the family is going to prepare acorn biscuits, and the mother, grandmother, and Frida start right in with it. As customary, Elda is going to have a companion with her for four days, in the event lack of nourishment should weaken her. There are various feats of endurance the girl has to perform to strengthen and prepare her for her future life as a woman. Weeding, bending down close to the earth and enduring it, is also regarded as a task. Walking great distances has always been one of the important tasks, and Elda has inherited the light walk of her ancestors. To the river, down below Dresslerville, the women take the acorn flour and all cooking paraphernalia. This is the way the food has always been prepared, in a moving, living stream of water which gives the food a fresh, sweet taste and fills the soul with quietude and peace. And this water is pure and sweet. Preparation of the acorn biscuit is a lengthy, leisurely procedure which usually involves hours and hours. The cedar branch is going to give the acorn mush a faint aroma of pine, and pouring water on it is going to draw out all the bitterness. When these women were children, it was natural to come down to the river and cook with heated stones. For the stones, as for firewood and so much else, they have only to turn to nature, to sit on the ground, to spot the right stones, to handle it all with exactly the proper gesture, 
All this is inborn in the older people. Since the dawn of mankind, this has been the traditional way. And for an occasion like the girl dance, they wouldn't dream of foregoing the river, though the new water tower with its shiny electric pump may be waiting in Dresslerville. When they are gone, one wouldn't know they've been here. Nature has not been disturbed. Nothing has been changed. Scores and scores of people who will be coming for the celebration are going to have midnight supper in here. As the beginning of the ceremony is nearing, the air fills with anticipation and a feeling of festiveness. <laughs> Presents are wrapped to be given away in the morning. Dress materials, tied to them coins, and a bit of sage, this time for good luck. <laughs> a larger coin is tied to the pole, eldest pole, for some lucky person who will get it later. Then, carefully, the grandmother stands up the pole. <laughs>
Now the women bring on their contributions to the celebration. The ceremony is starting. They're bringing out Elda. This gentle ritual is a farewell to Elda's girlhood, a farewell by the women and the mother. The girl has to give away whatever is wanted of her, the coin from the pole, even her dress. Now the dance, which will last throughout the night, gets underway. Once the dance begins, once the circle is formed, until sunup, it mustn't stop. The circle, the circle of life as well, Elder's life. For if the dancing circle breaks, her life may suffer illness or setbacks. <laughs> Coins are given away by the mother, and the cricket sums suggest the joyful feeling. <laughs> Waiting to partake of the feasting inside. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. 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 O
It is shortly before sunup. They are bringing out Elda for the morning ceremony, bringing out the new woman. She faces east toward the rising sun. This ancient ceremony is symbolic. With the young sage, the grandmother gently brushes over the girl. She wishes the girl well, wishes her a long life, many children, and a happy old age. With blood-red earth mingled with water, she is painted in four touches, as if bearing in mind the four directions of Mother Earth. The water poured over the girl is symbolic of purification. And now, the giveaway presents. For the first time in four days, the comb through the hair. Once again, the table is laden with what is left of the feasting. Choosing one of each kind, the mother assembles Elda's first meal. Together with a tiny bit of sage, this is Elda's first nourishment in four days. Her first bite as a woman. The basket is presented to the closest relative. Then, the others enter once again and the food is distributed. For the family must keep none of the leftovers for themselves. The sun is high now and the morning gets underway. Elda does not go to school today. <laughs> they can't leave off celebrating. On and on they dance like one big family. <laughs> Carrying the night along with him, the dancing and singing echoing in his veins, the boy rushes, runs to school, to town, and on into the modern world.